Hi y'all, I'm Allison, back once again with the Easter edition of Just Spin It, and we are going to be playing for one of my viewers, Phoenix Rose, today. We'll be doing five spins, and let's face it, if we don't get a star organically through the game, I will be spinning another one for the sixth spin, because Phoenix Rose needs an Easter basket. I know the Easter Bunny himself will be coming in just a few days, but you know, you can never have too many Easter baskets, right? So, okay, let's just go right into the game and see what they're going to be reading. I do know that at the moment, they're preferring something on the lighter side, some easy reads, like some variety, and sci-fi has been calling to them. All right, enough blabbing. Let's get the game started and see what books they'll be reading this month. Are you ready, Phoenix Rose? I thought you were going to start with a star. Number four. We've got a cute little bunny. I had so much fun making these, y'all. Okay, White Rabbit, you're late. You have to read a neglected series. So I know you also said that you've been enjoying uh, doing some rereads lately. So if there's an old series that you are wanting to get back into, now is your chance. I don't know how well I'll be able to one on this for you so I will just go with a series I've neglected that might fit what you're looking for and then maybe there'll be one within yours that I've neglected to add. we will see what we can come up with by the way all of the prompts are Easter related or different famous bunnies and a couple of them are for spring so definitely have a theme going all right, I've got one that I really need to get back to because I read one second. Let me have it, girl. Thank you. Y'all know the drill. She'll get it back as soon as we're done. Last time I picked up the series was October of 2021. Definitely neglected. And that is the Iron Druid Chronicles. I'm on book two, Hex. So the first one is Hounded. I've talked about this one before. I absolutely love it. Atticus, he's out in Arizona. He is the last druid. And he he's on the radar of every supernatural being that there is. And they're coming after him. His friend is a vampire lawyer. And he has an Irish wolfhound as his best friend. Oberon is the dog's name. And they can actually communicate telepathically. If you've never read it, I highly recommend this book. I absolutely love it. Why I haven't gotten to book two yet, I don't know. I don't, I think it just hasn't fit any of my prompts. Anyway, Hounded is the first one from your library. I know one that you definitely need to read because you loved part one. And I don't think you've gotten to part two yet. And that is Amari and the Night Brothers, the second one. This is the first book. One second. I have got to do something about my shelves. It is a nightmare. I can't find anything. Just cause an avalanche. Let me see if I can find Amari. Amari. Well, I've got her here somewhere. Maybe she's behind my board. That could be it. It's Amari and the Great Game, I believe. I'm 95% sure I'm right. Anyway, part two. Awesome. Awesome series. And you need to read the second one. Amani, let me see if I can remember. She went to a secret school for magic in New York. She's a middle grader and her brother went missing. So she wants to find out what happened to him. And she's also discovering about her own powers and attending a almost like a boarding school kind of thing. But I believe it was during summer vacation, if I remember correctly. Anyway, I'm sure everybody is familiar with Amari and Phoenix Rose. You need to read that second book because it was so good. Okay, let's do your second spin. Oh, we got to replace. What was I thinking? I'm so excited. Okay, we've got Color Easter Eggs Activity Book. I hope you get this one because I know what I would recommend. I've had that prompt before and it was so much fun. Okay, are we ready? Let's go for our second spin. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just 
just wanting to. Number two. Got a sign pointing to the eggs. Egg hunt has a quest. Quest books are fun. Okay, I've got a middle grade for you. This one I got from Al Great Jr. and I really enjoyed it. It's The Last Shadow Warrior by Sam Subedy. Sub yeah, I believe. And if I remember correctly, this was a debut. It was really good. Norse mythology, an ancient enemy, a deadly quest, and she thought sixth grade math was hard. 12-year-old Abby comes from a long line of elite Viking warriors. Known as the Aser. I'm sure I'm mispronouncing it. And it's her life's goal to hunt the monsters called Grendels, just like her mother did before she died. There's just one small problem. Grendels haven't been seen in hundreds of years, and the Viking elders want to dis disband the um, Asir's forever. There's a mysterious attack on her home, and Abby is forced to take refuge at Vale Hall. Vale Hall, let's see. Vale Hall, a secret field school in Minnesota where nothing is quite as it seems. This was really good. You've got like a boarding school theme, the Norse mythology, the Viking warriors, you know, and the, the mythical beasts, and I highly enjoyed this. So, if you don't have this one on your radar, it should be. Okay, for one out of your library, which we both own, or you're waiting for it from the library, if I remember correctly. A Rover's Story. I know you saw my vlog about this that I just put up. I cannot praise this book enough. I know you're excited to read it. And I would call this one a quest. He's on a quest at Mars to get some information for us. So if anybody else is curious about this and you don't know what vlog I'm talking about, I will link it up there and have it down in the description or something. Anyway, I'll make sure you can find it. It's part of my prep work for the Magical Readathon at Aurelium Academy. I believe this was, yeah, we were setting up my character. All right, so I got a Rover story officially on your list. I think you're waiting to get it from the library, but let me know. Let's put up this cute little bunny. And we've got Peter Rabbit, a middle grade. Another one of your favorites. Middle grades are so fun. All right, we're on to spin number three. Moving a little farther down to number 10. Got this adorable little gnome. Isn't he cute? Bugs Bunny. What's up, Doc? So we need something with like a healer, a doctor, a medical element, like a, a magical illness or a plague or, you know, something medically related. Which, you know, I bet there's some good sci-fi ones for this. Okay. This will be a, a fun pick. I don't know if you've heard of Lockdown Abbey and... I have a feeling this one's either going to be really good or it's really just going to kind of tank. This is by Beth Cohen Erskine. No one in, no one out. Family can be murder. It's the 1930s and there's a mysterious illness spreading across Scotland. But the noble and ancient family of Inverkillen, residents of Lockdown Abbey, are much more concerned with dwindling lavatory paper supplies and who will look after their children now that their nanny has regretfully and most inconveniently departed this life. So they've got a um, pandemic going on. This was written in 2020. Everybody remembers the lack of toilet paper when all of that started. So this I have a feeling is a satire and I've been wanting to read it. It's an upstairs, downstairs. Definitely has to do with medical got an illness. There's a plague. If you pick it and you read it, let me know. Now, when we were talking right before I filmed, started filming this, you said that you were in the mood for rereads and some light, easy reads. And there's another one with medical that is a reread. I know you're feeling uh, sci-fi right now. So I immediately went to one of my favorites because I found I have very little sci-fi. But I wanted to get some on here for you, so... Oh, no. Oh, okay. That just sounded worse than it was. It was my egg. 
Illuminae. We've got a illness in here. I don't remember what it was to tell you the truth, but I did tag it on StoryGraph. A deadly plague has broken out on one of the ships and nobody in charge will say what's really going on. So there's a plague. I love this. I know you've already read it and it has definitely made its way around YouTube. So if for some reason you haven't heard of Illuminae, it is so fun. It's mixed media. You get all sorts of, all sorts of goodness in here. Sci-fi, really good time. Look it up, grab a copy and read it if you haven't. Phoenix Rose, I know you've read it, but maybe it's a time for a reread of it. I personally myself have been wanting to grab this one again lately, but I have so many and read that it's going to wait a little bit longer. This is a book I wish I could read again for the first time. I had so much fun with this. It was so different that I, I was just giddy the entire way through. I think I read this like in one sitting. It was crazy. And let's replace that with some jelly beans. Peter Cottontail, you're getting all the famous bunnies. This would be a classic. All right, we're up to the fourth spin. Number five. Got these flowers, I guess tulips. Easter fires, a buddy read. So this is, I forgot to mention, also among all the prompts are some different Easter traditions that I found from around the world. I did a little research while setting up the game. And Easter fires is something that they do in Northwestern Europe. Let me look it up and make sure I have my facts right. I don't trust my memory. I've got too much going on the brain. Which reminds me, if you've been following my Aurelium journey with my little dwarf, Nosilla, Nosilla, I'll never get that, then you might want to subscribe because her next video will be up in two days. And that will be, I believe, it might be her TBR finally. I don't know. I've got my list somewhere. Anyway, we're still continuing with the every other day theme. But let's get back to Northwestern Europe. In Northwestern Europe, they used to light large bonfires to chase winter away, but now they still do it, but it's to bring communities together instead of necessarily chasing out winter. But I love either reasoning for it. It sounds so awesome. Anyway, back to our task at hand, a buddy read. Okay, this is gonna be easy. I am going to pick two books that we both own. I unfortunately have not been able to read A Secret Princess yet. I know you were planning to read it in March too, but, or at least it was on your up next and you haven't gotten to it either. So hopefully in April, we can buddy read this together. And I love that we're going to be using StoryGraph to do that. And this is a retelling of A Little Princess, The Secret Garden. And I think you said Little Lord Flatterly. So I am looking forward to this and we will make it happen in April. Another option. It's part two in the Logan Foster. I got my copy. I cannot wait. Logan Foster is awesome. He is a, he's neurodivergent. He has a photographic memory. He can recall everything, I believe. Yeah, he is autistic and he was an orphan, but he was adopted and he finds out that he's adopted by superheroes. And that's all on the, the back flap of the first book. But this middle grade was awesome. The very first book. And I have been so excited to read the second one. Logan is the most adorable character I think I've come across in a long time. I just want to put him in my pocket and keep him with me because he is just precious. And the book was great. It made me think of The Incredibles. If you enjoyed that movie, you will love Logan Foster. And... I say we buddy read this one too, because I think that would be fun. Now, of course, feel free if you want to buddy read with somebody else. If you have another one going on your list, go right ahead. No obligation. We can get to it whenever. Let's go ahead and replace this one and see what's up next. Let's put up an Easter bonnet, Easter dress, something with a gown on the cover. This is spin number five.
14. You've got a little egg, another missing egg, something that has an investigation. Again, this would be a good one for a sci-fi or a cozy mystery. Those are always nice, light, fun, easy reads. I'm betting, and I'm curious to know, I bet you are familiar with Margaret Peterson Haddock's, just because I know you really enjoy uh, middle grade. Middle grade sci-fi. This is really good. It does have a investigation in it because we've got 13 year old Jonathan, another adopted. He's always known he was adopted and he never thought it was a big deal. He and his new friendship start receiving mysterious letters. First one says, you are one of the missing. The second one says, beware, they're coming back to get you. Jonah, what did I call him? What did I say his name was? I think I got that wrong. Anyway, Jonah, he wants to investigate what these letters are about. Chip and Jonah's sister, Catherine, they, they don't, nope, they don't want to do it. FBI becomes involved and there's a smuggling operation and an airplane. And I read the first book and then I didn't move on in the series. I think I've got five and this was really good. I really found it very intriguing. And so if you haven't heard of Found by Margaret Peterson Haddix, then I recommend it. And this is the Missing is a series. Okay, for you, I am going to go with Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. I think this may be a reread for you. If so, pick up wherever you are in the series. And if not, then you should definitely read this one. I think you would really like it. Elite Boarding School set up in a remote location out in, May in Vermont. There's an old cold case and Stevie wants to get to the bottom of it that's her passion in life there's another murder that happens all right so truly devious if you have read it then pick up wherever you are in the series unless you want to go back and start with that book again let's replace it with this egg chocolate bunny a bunny on the cover that reminds me now that we're here getting close to the end i had a whole bunch of fun cover prompts and none of them came up i don't think okay i know i said five spins but you have to have an easter basket and Lily is saying happy Easter. She found her squeaker. So he, he might end up on the shelf here in just a second. We will see. I, I think she's chewing on the one that she's already broken. Okay, let's do our spin for up top. Eighteen. I'm incapable of math. <laughs> so I was looking, I, I don't know if y'all ever noticed, I have a cheat sheet down here. See, this is all the numbers. So 18, which is a long way of saying, we need this one. It's my favorite one up there. As far as the image, because you've got old jelly beans, Phoenix Rose, and we have to add plus two to get rid of the taste in your mouth. I'm sorry, <laughs> but we get more time with the Easter board and maybe some of those cover prompts will come up. So let's replace our basket with another one. I hope you're over there laughing. Or thinking, <laughs> typical. Okay, so we've got two baskets left. I'm not looking and I'm not gonna show. So let's put up the pink one. Those are meant to be a surprise. Okay, we've got to do two more spins. Number six. You get a purple peep. And the prompt is peeps. Okay, we need a quiet word in the title. So something like silent, whisper, those kind of words. This will be fun to hunt down. Or just a big challenge. Sometimes these are hard to find, but I, I like the challenge. Okay, this one took me a little bit, but... I found one. I'm going to grab a classic for you. The Phantom of the Opera. Phantom is quiet, right? I read this not too long ago and I really enjoyed it. I was surprised. There's a lot of humor in here and believe it or not, it is, I would call it a light, easy read. The language is very accessible. It's not bogged down by descriptions or 
symbolism or any it's just a really good gothic story with quite a bit of humor surprisingly there is a critter in my backyard and lily is losing her mind so i will be right back we get opossums a lot okay i don't know if she'll stay with me but now she's just checking out the front window her tail is wagging. she's so happy but i'm not letting her run out into the yard and wake my neighbors plus when she corners one they play dead and then she's over there trying to get it and just barking at it and it, she's way out in the back corner and I can't see where I'm going and I'm a little freaked out. So, no, she's not going to go chasing. Anyway, a quiet word. How ironic when my dog loses her mind. From yours, I thought I would pull up a, I believe this would be a graphic novel. Cemetery Boys. Hopefully the cemetery is quiet. Yeah. We don't want it to be loud there, especially if you're there at night. I have seen this one go around booktube quite a bit, I guess, when it first came out. And I know it's a very beloved series. By the way, this is by Aiden Thomas. Okay, so let's see if I got this right. There's a trans boy who is determined to prove his gender to his traditional Latin family. And to do this, he goes out to the cemetery to summon a ghost and I believe of his murdered cousin. So I guess they want, he wants to find out who did it or something like that. Instead, he ends up summoning a different ghost, Julian, and Julian refuses to leave. He guess he was like the school bully, bully. And the two end up working together in, I guess, to find out what happened to the cousin. And that turns out that he doesn't want Julian to leave after all. So I, I hear it's supposed to be a really good book, and I just haven't ever picked it up. So... I would say cemetery would be a quiet word, although in this case, this cemetery may not be so quiet with all these ghosts coming up. But anyway, there you go. Okay, let's replace that with a chocolate bunny. <laughs> it says big basket to fill. It's a plus one. We don't want this chocolate bunny. Okay, are we ready? This time on the theme board, I usually forget to put those in. I put them in this time. I, I wonder if that was not a good idea. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, one more. Fourteen. Do we already get this? This is an egg. Chocolate bunny. The bunny on the cover. Yay, we get to look for a bunny. I need to check if, when I make some of these prompts for I think maybe the first, if not then the second time, I admit complete defeat. I could not find a book with a bunny on it. I don't have one. We're gonna come back to the bunny one. Let's move on. Okay, let's pick up this pink or this yellow. It's the Velveteen Rabbit. Reread an old favorite. And look, y'all, we've got two lonely little Easter eggs left that have just been sat there. They've just been stuck there and nobody found them. And that's just wrong. So, Phoenix Rose, I know you like multiples of three. If we do two more spins, you'll end up with nine, which is a multiple of three. Since this TBR, it's not something that you're going to feel compelled to complete the entire list before the end of the month. I think we will go ahead and do the two more spins. So, Everything will at least be up on the board. So I, I hope you you like this idea. And if not, um, I'm sorry. And thank you for all the help with my really um, ideas that I, I needed today. So, okay. We're going to spin again. In case you all were wondering, I needed some help. Give me some information without peeking. So Phoenix Rose rose to the challenge for me and was invaluable. So thank you. Thank you, my friend. Oh, and how do I reward you? I give you extra spins. Um, it's done out of love. Okay, let's spin. Number 10. Do we have that? We did. Wait, what? Oh, I thought this was the plus one. <laughs> okay, it's Peter Cottontail. This is a classic. So, not as exciting. I mean, classics are good. I know you like them too. So, okay. One of, one, one, one of the more fun ones. I don't know. Let's, yeah. 
Okay, for a classic, I'm going to recommend The Canterville Ghost by Oscar Wilde. I listened to this as an audiobook, and it was so fun. You've got uh, an old cantankerous ghost in a old manor. A family moves in, and unlike everybody who's come along since he died, this family is not afraid of him. In fact, he meets his match with them. They're just as big of pranksters as he is, and it was such a good time. So, you know, Oscar Wilde, he, he's got a really good way with humor with also hitting on some, you know, pretty hefty topics in the meantime. But I, I really enjoyed the audiobook is really short. I think it was only like four hours. So there's my recommendation for a classic. It would be light and fun and easily accessible. And then from yours, I found... Either got The Scapegoat by Daphne du Maurier. I've never read any of her books. I've been wanting to. I, I think Rebecca is the one that you hear the most. So it's on my list for one day I should read this. And the other one is The October Count Country. October Country by Ray Bradbury. Again, isn't he a sci-fi author? And these are short stories. So you could pick between one of those. I'm not going to go into them if you don't mind because... I, I'm I'm brain dead. Phoenix Rose was helping me earlier this evening with ideas for another video that I'm doing that'll be up very soon. And I've got all of these ideas bouncing around in my head and trying to remember what a book is about at the same time. It, it's just, I'm, I'm running out of brain power. So forgive me, please. Okay, but let's keep going. We'll put up this purple one, a pastel cover. Okay, last spin. Eleven. We're just really staying right there. You get a bag of carrots to, you know, combat all the candy. So, Easter in title. The letter is E-A-S-T-E-R in any order. We gotta find those letters. Talk about a challenge. These are fun, but they always end up a lot harder than I ever anticipated. Okay, wait, I found it. We're like closing in on midnight. It's been a very long day. Okay, The Secret Life of Sparrow Delaney. This is, let's see, E, A, S, T, and then we got another E, and, oh, thank God, there's the R. Yeah, I, I couldn't believe how hard it was to find. It's always like an E or an R was missing. Uh, what are the spirits telling her now? If she does tarot cards, and again, had this forever, so she's beginning 10th grade in a new school. And thinks her dreams of anonym anonymity and a fresh start are finally coming true. No more following in the footsteps of her six older sisters. No more going to class with kids who have seen her grandmother doing jujitsu in the backyard next to the headstones of her four dead husbands. And no, about, no more worrying about keeping her deep, dark secret hidden. See, her secret is she's a psychic. And there's one very persistent ghost who won't let her forget. And this is one I, I keep meaning to get on my list, and I just never have. I, it sounds really fun. This was 2007. It, it sounds adorable, like a good time. From your library, I'm going to put it up on the screen. We've got the Witches of Moonshine Manor. And I'll see if I can somehow do this. with. It'll be really hard with graphics. But I promise you, E-A-S-T-E-R is in there. Oh, that's what I'll, I'll circle. I'll just circle each leather. Bam. Okay. There it is. This one sounded really good. We've got a coven of modern day witches, a, heist, a magical heist gone wrong, and five octogenarian witches gather at Moonshine Manor as the mob threatens them. So much right there. That's all I needed to know. That was the one from yours. Okay. And just so it's not left out, the one that was left was fly a kite which is another tradition so in the prompt was ribbon or banner on the cover this is one of the ones i was kind of hoping would turn up so in bermuda they make homemade kites and fly them on good friday that's one of their easter traditions over there and i love that i, I can picture all the families outside flying their homemade kites it just sounds so wholesome and happy and it, it just makes my heart 
to sing a little. Now let's go back to that bunny issue because I couldn't find one. So we are going to re-spin and get you a new prompt and hopefully it'll, it'll be possible to fill it. You were going to get a star. Okay, we're going all the way down to the bottom. Number 24. I feel like we never get that number. It's a cute little bunny hiding behind an egg. Jelly beans. TBR jar wheel. Okay, I'm okay with this because I don't have to decide. Let's go fire up the computer. Find out what jar we'll be pulling from. Okay, let's go ahead and spin and see what we're going to get. Pumpkin, Halloween. Okay, so this is all of my horror and my thriller books. Anything or anything with like a, a gothic spooky vibe. So here this one is, if y'all remember. Oh, we're doing Halloween on the Easter. It, it just clicked. Okay, let's see what book you're going to get. Of course, I haven't cleaned this out. so, But it doesn't matter if I've read it. And I'm just going to go right here from... Oops. Got two black ones. So we'll go with the one that is in my finger. Although the one in my thumb grabbed hold first. Well, we'll put that aside. And we get Frozen Fire. So this is by Tim Bowler. He's not of this world. I'm dying, said the voice. This is how it starts with a seemingly random phone call. Who or what is the voice and how did it get Dusty's phone number? Dusty wants no part of it until the voice begins saying things that only someone who knows Dusty would say. Okay, so apparently this is a psychological mystery. Things that, that lead her to believe that the caller knows where her brother is. Suddenly, Dusty finds herself wanting to save this boy. The trouble is she can't find him and he doesn't want to be found. He claims he is too dangerous. And there are many people who agree. But can Dusty avoid getting hurt and still protect this mysterious boy? So there you go, Frozen Fire. I haven't read this one yet. So I don't know if it will be any good. I did get it on at the bargain table at Borders before they closed. 2006 is when this one came out. Okay, we did it. Because I am going to let you randomize your list. I know we talked about doing a random number generator. But I don't know which list to pull from and like I said my, my brain's a little melted so and I'm afraid this is going to be so long anyway I hope y'all enjoy this Phoenix Rose I hope you find some great books in this list and I'm excited to see what you end up picking out and what you thought of the Easter board I hope you enjoyed it and once again thank you for your help today if anybody would like to play this in the future let me know. The information I need is down in the description. Or if you have questions about it, feel free to send me an email or ask in the comments. Anyway, I'm out of here, y'all. My brain has melted. It's going to start coming out of my ear any second. And keep an eye out because in just a couple of days, we will find out more for the Magical Readathon. I think that's when we'll finally know what classes. I I'm not sure. I've lost track of where I am and what I'm doing. Anyway, y'all have a great one. I hope April and Easter will treat you wonderfully. Bye now.